If you keep getting recurrences of SIBO and you want them to stop, you're going to find this video helpful because we're going to discuss which foods and supplements can help do this from a research study that hasn't even been published yet. What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcut, the online guide and community dedicated to make top-notch SIBO information accessible and affordable to everyone. Per the research study I just mentioned, until now, there hasn't been enough research to definitively state the proper nutrition and supplementation to prevent the recurrence and development of SIBO. With that said, in this video, we're going to discuss one, a brief overview of SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Two, introduce this research article. Three, discuss the four types of food to eat to promote gut motility, create a well-balanced microbiome, and prevent a SIBO recurrence. Number four, discuss supplements that may help with promoting gut motility, creating a well-balanced microbiome, and most importantly, preventing a recurrence of SIBO. And then stick around till the very end because I'm going to give you my five main takeaways from this research study. Real quick though, if you get value from this video, please go ahead and click that like and subscribe button to my channel for more videos like this one. Here we go, section number one, what is SIBO? Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is when you have too many of the wrong type of bacteria or microorganisms in the wrong place. Usually the small intestine, but for the case of methane SIBO or intestinal methanogen, overgrowth. This also includes the large intestine as well. Sometimes when the digestive system does not work properly, food will sit in the stomach and intestines longer than it should. This can happen due to issues with the muscles and the nerves in the intestine that work together to move food throughout the digestive tract. These muscles and nerves are what is known as the migrating motor complex or MMC for short. When this MMC is not working properly, SIBO is more likely to happen. And what you eat actually plays a role in your MMC. And and it also plays a role in which microorganisms are supported in your microbiome. Knowing which foods to eat is crucial for maintaining a healthy, properly functioning digestive tract and preventing conditions such as SIBO. And if you're trying to keep SIBO from returning, I've put together a SIBO elimination guide. It includes gut healing protocols, the latest research, including the research study in this video that hasn't even been released yet. You also get ongoing support in a private Facebook group. This is all included in an affordable monthly membership. To learn more, go to SIBOshortcutinfo.com. And now, back to the video. This 2024 review by Nutrition Journal is scheduled to be released in August 2024. It's not even out yet. Its main purpose was to evaluate the available research to find connections between food, gut motility, and SIBO with the main goal of preventing recurrences of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We'll move ahead to the findings of this research study with the four types of food to eat to help promote gut motility, create a well-balanced microbiome, prevent a recurrence of SIBO. First up, we have prebiotics and soluble fiber. Prebiotics, not to be confused with probiotics, are substances that selectively support the growth of microorganisms. The benefits of pre prebiotics do not end with the microbiome though. This review also notes that prebiotics do not only have an impact on the microbiome, these substances also improve gut motility, which was observed in the case of fruits rich in sorbitol. I took a look at this study they're referencing and some of the fruits that were used are kiwi fruit, apple, prunes, and raisins. A couple other notable types of prebiotics include FODMAPs, which is a term you may have heard of before. One in particular, fructooligosaccharides, shortened to FOS, which includes certain foods such as chicory, artichoke, banana, onion, garlic, and wheat. This is not a complete list, just want to rattle off a few of them for you here. Foods high in soluble fiber were also beneficial. Some examples of soluble fiber include oats, barley, citrus fruits, berries, and carrots. And then another prebiotic that they talked about was partially hydrolyzed guar gum, shortened to PHGG. This is derived from breaking down a substance known as guar gum, which comes from a bean called the guar bean. The guar bean is used as a thickening agent in a lot of foods to help out with the texture. When this guar gum is broken down into a shorter fiber chain, then it can become PHGG. This makes it a little bit easier to digest and less likely to cause gas and bloating. PHGG is not found in foods to the best of my knowledge, but it is available in supplement form. Taking up to about seven grams a day is a reasonable daily dose for this product.
product, you can take it in divided doses. And I would recommend starting with a lower amount, such as one to two grams daily before you taper up. Lastly, on PHGG, it was proven that soluble fiber from partially hydrolyzed guar gum has a beneficial effect on the fecal microbiota, increases stool water, and improves constipation. Therefore, it decreases the passage of food residues in the intestine. Now on to non-soluble fiber, also known as insoluble fiber. Unlike the soluble fiber, this insoluble fiber is not fermented by the gut microbiome. However, it can still help promote gut motility and prevent constipation, which is a major factor in preventing SIBO. Some examples of non-soluble or insoluble fiber include whole grains, nuts, seeds, potatoes, especially with the skin on, broccoli, and cauliflower. This is not all of them, just wanted to name a few. The third food this article mentioned was polyphenols. These are plant compounds with antioxidant and other beneficial properties such as promoting gut motility. This article states, a characteristic feature associated with consumption of these food products is an increase in bifidobacteria, lactobacilli, and bacterium presnutsi species, which are all important bacteria in a healthy microbiome. Some foods that have polyphenols in them, berries, dark chocolate, red grapes, apples, green tea, and coffee. The last food this article talked about was tryptophan, which is an amino acid found in a lot of products containing high protein, such as meat, chicken, fish, eggs, but also some plant sources as well. Moving on to the next section, supplements after SIBO treatment to prevent SIBO recurrence. These are for supporting a healthy microbiome and also gut motility. Ones they mentioned include probiotics. There's several types. First type mentioned was lactobacillus. Some species mentioned were ruteri, acidophilus, and rhamnosus. Number two was bifidobacterium. In the article, they talked about lactis and bifidum. Third was bacillus species, which are soil-based organisms or spore-forming probiotics. They mentioned a specific species called subtilis. And then lastly, number four, they talked about Saccharomyces boulardii. Another type of supplement was prokinetics. This research study only included ginger, licorice, and Chinese herbs. There's definitely several other ones as well. If you're curious to see more info on this topic, you can check out this video here. Butyrate was also discussed in this research article. Butyrate is a short chain fatty acid, which is produced by certain bacteria, such as Phacobacterium presnutsi. And then lastly, there were some antimicrobials that are in supplement form, but also herbs that you can cook with. Ones mentioned in this article included garlic, oregano, turmeric, thyme, rosemary, cinnamon, and onion. As I mentioned, if it was me and I got rid of SIBO, I would try to utilize some of these in cooking so I'm ingesting them regularly because this seems like a more natural and easy way to go about benefiting from them instead of taking them in pill form. If you do want to get pills though, check out my online dispensary on Fullscript. You get 20% off everything, whether it's SIBO related or not. Best of all, all the brands on Fullscript have to pass rigorous quality inspections so you can always trust what you're getting is quality. And now for the five takeaways from the video. One is slow intestinal motility and frequent constipation can be a cause of SIBO. Two is a disrupted migrating motor complex can also put you at risk of developing SIBO or getting a recurrence of SIBO. Number three is certain foods such as prebiotics, various types of fiber, polyphenols, and tryptophan may be able to protect against bacterial overgrowth and support gut motility. Four is various probiotics may be able to assist with rebuilding the gut microbiome, but also with increasing gut motility. And then number five, natural prokinetics are key in accelerating gut motility and preventing a relapse of SIBO. That is all for today. If you got value from this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And since you watched till the end, I think you'll find one of these two videos helpful next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.